So looking at the close passage here, right? Couple of things for the new people again. When it comes to close passage, we're looking at uh, context, right? Which means I need to understand what the context is giving or what is the main theme associated so I can pick rela related words, right? And I also have to pay attention to certain uh, clue words that are standing. So, for example, Sebi's uh, decision to tighten rules. So, I need to understand what this is. It's definitely not a person's name, right? S-E-B-I. What does it stand for? Yes, Praveen. Mostly that is the case. Unless uh, there are two verbs, right? You could have a past perfect tense and you can have a past tense, right? But predominantly the tense will convey the same meaning. And then you have P note, right? These are all some things that you need to know, which will help you. Yes. So Anuba and uh, Rajesh and Namrata have uh, put down what it means, right? So service decision to tighten rules for participatory notes is acceptable in the larger objective of maintaining transparency on the dash of those investing in the markets. Sure, increased disclosure requirements, bringing P note holders under the dash of Indian Know Your Customer and anti money laundering rules, and dash the transfer of P notes among foreign investors will raise transaction cost and complicate compliance for issuers. Investors whose only interest is to avoid the dash of registering themselves as foreign portfolio investors rather than to hide their identity, should not find the new norms too dash. The rest can well lump it. Okay, so basically, all right. If you look at the context, as long as I understand what SEBI and P note is, I have a fair understanding of what the context is trying to convey to me. All right. So SEBI, like most of you said, it's Securities and Exchange Board of India. Right. So and when you understand what P note is, nothing but participatory notes. It's it's common. It's um, more popularly known as P notes. So what are these participatory notes? Basically, the FII, which is the uh, foreign institutional investors, right? They kind of register these P notes. <coughs> to who? To overseas investors, right? Now, what do these overseas investors want to do? They want to invest in the Indian stock market. But they don't want to go through the problem or the headache of registering themselves with the market regulator, right? So the SEBI comes into the picture there. Are you following? So basically these participatory notes are registered by the FII, right? To overseas investors who want to invest in Indian stock market, but they don't want to register themselves because it's a, maybe it's a long process. It's a tedious process. It's a pain in the wrong place, whatever the reasons. Now, so we have a fair understanding of what SEBI and participatory notes are. Now, let's go back, look at each blank, pay attention to what the context is talking about, right? And you also have to pay attention to repeated words in the context, right? Keep track of repeated words. Now, so let's look at the first blank. So SEBI's decision to title rules for participatory notes is acceptable in the larger objective of maintaining transparency on the dash of those investing in the markets. So obviously we are looking at of those investing in the markets. That's your clue phrase. So obviously we're looking at something of the people, right? Of these people who are investing in the markets. What are my options? Identity, character, coherence, existence, singularity. Now, because we have a fair understanding of what participatory notes is and what SEBI does, we obviously know that the answer has to be identity. Can you think, can you go through the context and there is in fact a clue for you in the context? Remember, one way to look at it is to also look at the topic sentence and the closing sentence, right? It gives you a closure in terms of, okay, this is the theme. This is what uh, the uh, the paragraph is going to be about, topic sentence. Closing sentence also kind of sums up to an extent, right? What the topic sentence is trying to say. So if you look at the closing sentence, actually it says, 
Investors whose only interest is to avoid the dash of registering themselves as foreign portfolio investors rather than to hide their identity should not find the... See, so that's why I said keep uh, looking at the context. Right? Keep looking at the context. So you have this already here. That's what they want to do at the end of the day. Yes. Right? So here, the same thing. Maintaining transparency. They don't want to be known. Right? So, it has to be identity. Coherence. Namrata, I think that was your question, right? What is coherence? Coherence means... Uh, when, when, you, when you look at coherence, the word, you might have heard it in other contexts, which means something that brings in some sort of consistency, right? Something that is very natural or logical, a, a connect, that's coherence. To come together, co, right? That's, uh, like I said, even if you can't kind of figure out the meaning, dissect the word, look at uh, co as a very common, some it's one of the common prefixes, right? Coexist, existing together, right? Codependent, depending on one another, right? So coherence has to do with something where there is a natural connect or some sort of a consistency, right? So here, Main, uh, they want to maintain transparency about what? This is also another clue phrase. Somebody pointed that out, right? Maintaining transparency about what? Not character, not existence, but identity. We already have that in the closing sentence. Let's move on. Sure, increased disclosure requirements, bringing P note holders under the dash of Indian know your customer and anti-money laundering rules. So, what are my options for two? I have influence, space, ambit, extent, rule. Right now, how do I figure out what can be the word that I need for second blank? It says under the dash of Indian know your customer and anti money laundering rules. I have some sort of ideas listed here. Now, rule, as somebody pointed out, I think I don't know who said somebody before Subhadi, right? Somebody said option five. It's very redundant if I use rule. It cannot be under the rule of Indian know your customer and anti-money laundering rules. Right? It's redundant. I can't use that word. Okay? Now, let's move and look at influence, space, ambit or extent. If you look at the context of Indian know your customer and anti-money laundering rules, these look like the standard operating procedures. Right now, if I say these are the standard operating procedures, or this is what they want to bring it under, the scope is given. The scope is Indian know your customer and anti money laundering rules. So, I need to look at a word that is closest to bringing out that meaning. Right, this is the this is the influence we have. So, under the influence might look like a very colloquial expression. But in the context, is it correct? Right? When I say I'm under the influence of something, it can, uh, it gives me a completely different meaning. I can be, someone can be under the influence of alcohol. Right? Someone can be under the influence of uh, violence on television. Right? You can have an influence on someone. So, but that is not the meaning that this context is saying. I'll eliminate one. Under the space, again, doesn't make sense. Right? What is the meaning of ambit? Anybody? What is the meaning of ambit? When I say ambit, I'm talking about a, a limit or a boundary or a, or, a, or a scope. And here it is referring to a sphere of operation or influence. Right? So they're saying increased disclosure requirements, bringing P note holders. So they want to bring the P note holders, right? Under the ambit of this is the scope, this is the extent. They've mentioned it, Indian know your customer and anti-money laundering rules. These are what they want to operate. This is the extent or boundary within which they want to operate. They want to bring the P note holders under the operation of Indian know your customer and anti-money laundering rules. So the right word is ambit, but you need to know the meaning of that word. 
to understand that this is the right fit in the context so a little bit of vocabulary will help you right so under the ambit is the more appropriate choice not under the extent again extent influence extent just uh, tells me the particular degree to which something is believed to be the case right i can do something to an extent that's not the context is giving me the meaning that the context is saying is i want to bring the p note holders under the sphere of operation of know your customer and anti money laundering rules under the influence or the scope of know your customer and anti money laundering rules ambit is the more appropriate word choice here moving on and dash the transfer of p notes among foreign investors will raise transaction cost and complicate compliance for issuers so what do you think if we do to the p notes will raise transaction cost and complicate compliance for issuers so both of these are negative right both of these are negative outcomes so what action if i take for the transfer of p notes will cause that negative action think about it look at my options it says freeing expanding releasing enlarging and restricting all the words it's a negative context right the only negative word in option 3 is 5 right if i free the transfer of p notes among foreign investors i think they'll be very happy if i expand it they're going to be happy if i release it they're going to be happy if i enlarge it they're going to be happy only if i restrict it these problems will come transact raise transaction cost will be raised and it will complicate compliance for issuers right so look at the context and choose the word appropriately understand the context investors whose only interest is to avoid the dash of registering themselves we already saw right they want to hide their identity so what are my options for fourth agreement hassle norms formula procedure so i need what obviously i need a noun form right to avoid the agreement of registering themselves to avoid the hassle of register to avoid the norms to avoid the formula to avoid the procedure we all know it is the hassle what is a hassle going through the trouble they don't want to bother themselves with that norms is our like standard operating things that need to be done so roja norms is not the right word here to avoid that's your clue word here to avoid the what not procedure not something standard norms and procedure are something standard they don't want to avoid that they want to avoid registering themselves that process of registering themselves is a pain in the wrong place for them is a bother they don't want to go through that trouble so investors whose only interest is to avoid the hassle of registering themselves as foreign portfolio investors rather than to hide their identity should not find the new norms to what if i have to come up with my own word for fifth blank right i will say i don't want them to find it too troublesome right hassle again is your um no 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 hassle here in this context is a noun to avoid the what to avoid the hassle is a noun here look at all your uh, options everything is a noun actually agreement norms formula procedure everything is a noun here to avoid the hassle of registering themselves as foreign portfolio investors rather than to hide that should not find the new norms too if i have to come up, come up with my own uh, word keeping in mind the context we're talking about being a, uh, being troublesome for them something which will be a burden for them they want to avoid that right so think of think of a word which has the same meaning right if i have to substitute my own word for five i will say something that is a burden to them burdensome something that is a trouble to them which we already saw hassle is our clue word so think of a word that means that hassle means bother trouble so rather than to hide that should not find the new norms to what what is the word that has the same meaning as troublesome or burdensome severe demanding objective onerous and acceptable obviously it's not it is not going to be acceptable because this is a positive word i can safely eliminate option 
right objective is an unrelated word it's neither here nor there i will eliminate objective so i need to choose between severe demanding and onerous in the context what is the more closest word that i can pick which has the meaning of troublesome or burdensome if you didn't know the meaning i understand that you know what the meaning of severe and demanding is but you may not know the meaning of onerous right what is the meaning of this word onerous means burdensome or troublesome and especially in this context we're talking about them having the responsibility or the obligation you know to go through something especially this, that's something that is not advantageous to them so in the context right if you look at the context we we've, we've relied mostly on the context keywords to help us understand the context yes correct that's what i'm saying if you didn't know that meaning you are you have the tendency to miss out on identifying the right word let's quickly put down the options one is one two is three three is five four is two and five is four yeah so those of you who are new when you are practicing for close passage context 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 rely on repeat words check for topic sentence close sentence see if words are repeating itself two look for uh, key words in the context understand the meaning it will help you arrive or choose selected or associated words right see if the context is giving positive or negative meaning and don't just go by uh, collocations also look for the closest word and match based on the context